define myself as Latina, but I know that within that I'm definitely Chicana. My parents are Mexican immigrants. My mom was seven months pregnant when she came over with me, so I barely made it because I was born premature. So <laughs> consequently, they really feared for us as kids because um, we were the immigrant kids. We were the ones that dressed funny and didn't have nice clothes. So we really weren't allowed out of the house. My parents worked a lot, so they weren't home, and I was the oldest, and so I was in charge of getting dinner ready and doing the laundry and the dishes and all that kind of thing. It wasn't a great childhood. School was hard too, though, because we lived in a community where we didn't have our own local school. So for the first, you know, fifth grade, I attended five different schools because they bused us to different places, and I just never got attached very much. I was always a good student. I mean, at the beginning, it was a little tough. I just remember being in preschool and. I understood what they were saying. My first language was Spanish. And you were always supposed to be on the tricycle for five minutes out of recess. I mean, I caught this part, but I couldn't communicate. And so the little boy was on the tricycle for five minutes. I could tell time. And I remember going over and like nudging him to get off. So he gets off, I get on, the teacher comes over and just lays into me about how you know I was a bully and I knocked the kid off. Now, in retrospect, it was my first experience of this is social injustice. You know, you know, I can't defend myself. And I just remember going and hiding and saying, I am going to defend myself. When, you know, I'm going to learn this language, I'm going to master this language, and I'm going to defend myself. So in kindergarten, since I, Spanish was my first language, they put me in the speech impediment class. Because you can tell I have a speech impediment. We would be playing, and then they'd say, OK, all the children you know, for the speech impediment class. And what I would hear is, all the dummies, get in line. This is how it felt for me. And then finally, in fifth grade, my parents put me into a parochial school. In the public school that we were in, my dad had said, well, I don't think my children are doing as well as I'd like them to do, you know. And he says that the teacher said we were retarded. And he got really angry because his children are not in any way educationally challenged. My brother is the lawyer for San Francisco School District. He's got, you know, Harvard, Stanford, Berkeley. I mean, <laughs> my sister is like going to be the first judge in San Diego, UCLA Law. I mean, no. So, so the thing is, is he took us out and put us into the parochial school system because he felt that um, we were just not getting the attention that we warranted. And so in fifth grade, I became the top student and pretty much stayed the top student through high school. When I got into high school, I had been the top student out of middle school and I did the placement exam. So I got a 99 percentile on the placement exam. They put me in the middle track. So I excelled in all my classes and got the top awards, and the vice principal brought me in and told me I was an exception to my race. It's true that I was made to feel that I wouldn't do well because I was Latina and because I was a woman. I remember taking a class in college, and I don't even remember who the professor was, and he was talking about how a particular metabolic pathway, how it functioned and how the different molecules moved, and then he had literally a black box on the presentation. The black box faded away and he showed all the enzymatic pathways in the middle and I thought, oh my God, that is so incredibly cool. You know, he has uncovered, he's opened that open, you know, the, bo the black box and I can be that scientist that really adds to the breadth of knowledge and I mean, to this day I can remember the box just fading away and just realizing, wow, that is such a wonderful example of what it is to be a scientist. And I remember the first time I discovered something. In grad school, we had half a gene for a protein. And the goal was to determine what that protein did in the cell. We found that this particular protein is involved in why making, allowing the cell to be modal, to move towards food and away from bad things. It's a big finding in Bacillus subtilis genetics. And, um, you know, just remember knowing that I'm the first one in history to know this. And, you know, I'm just going to sit here for a little while and be the only one that knows this. <laughs> and then I'll go communicate it to other people. But um, that is a very satisfying feeling to know that you're the only one that knows something. I love science. I'm fascinated by biological processes. Dow Woodward, who was a professor of mine at Stanford, said to me, why aren't you applying to PhD programs? And I said, well, first of all, there's no Latinas. And he introduced me to one. So that was that argument. And then I said, and I can't give back to my community. And he said, but Letty, what has been your greatest obstacle here at Stanford? And I said, well, the professors. I don't look like any of them. I don't sound like any of them. I can't talk to any of them. And he said, well, if you were a professor, and like the light bulb went off and, you know, epiphany moment. It's true that a lot of the scientists that I was trained with, it was really hard for me to connect with them. And so I feel like I'm an ambassador. 
I was often the only person of color on the panel at National Science Foundation that rewards grants. The first year I did it, I was in the bathroom crying because it was just like, I just don't want to be here. I don't, I'm tired of being pioneer. I'm just done with this. And then other times, you know, I got them, I got them to change their minds and they funded a person of color. So I know why I'm there and I feel like uh, they can really benefit from my presence. I've given workshops to professors at Stanford and Berkeley and we've tried to identify talent. And the things that come up are resourcefulness, resiliency, motivation, hard work ethic, ability to communicate with others, ability to navigate. And I thought about it and I'm like, I am resourceful, I am resilient, I am a, you know, committed, I am a hard worker. Well, where do I get this from? It's my parents. You know, Latinos, we have a different idea about work. You know, work is a gift from God that allows us to provide for our family. There are many characteristics I learned from my parents who are my representation of the Latino culture that has really made me um, be a successful scientist.